Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Real Fans Real Talk. I know I've been MIA, but your girl is back, Emma Marie. And I have my two amazing co-hosts here, the one and only legend in two games and Trip Young. What's going on, guys? I missed you so much. What up? What up? And we miss you as well. We know you've been very busy out here. Uh, I was rhyming. waiting for that. I miss you back, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we tell you that all the time, man. Yeah, so, you know, we've all been grinding. I've been just diving into my skincare line so much. So the marketing has been amazing from taking a little break. So I appreciate you guys and your support always. Um, but as you guys know, NBA season is back. We have been waiting forever. Um, as the world knows, they went on a, you know, hiatus uh, since March 11th due to the coronavirus pandemic. And as of July 30th, they came back. So um in the midst of them coming back i mean our our whole world was in a in a conversation a very important conversation of black lives matter of justice for brianna taylor of george floyd and so the nba as you guys know always does a pretty good job with making um just a positive light to social justice issues so uh this weekend during the Utah jazz uh game versus the New Orleans Pel Pelicans, they, the entire NBA, not only players, but coaches, franchise, everyone took a knee. Um, and this was huge because we know just a few years ago, Kaepernick was doing this and it was, he was a black sheep, you know? So to have the whole organization do this and it not be frowned upon is amazing. Um, and the NBA fully supported. Of course you had some people that obviously were against it. Um, but it was it was a lot of support and it was great to see. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was um, organized very well. Um, the NBA, we, we knew about Black Lives Matter on the court. We knew about the social justice messages that would be on the back of the jerseys. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of had an idea that something would be on the warm up T-shirts, um, but we didn't know for sure what would be there. But to see everyone in unison take a knee, um, I thought it was just was just great. We, you know, again, there were some people who didn't. Neil, um, we heard why from certain people and we understand why, you know, we got to respect everyone's opinion on it. Yeah. But ultimately, I thought it was a great sign of unity uh, by the NBA. And shout out to Mark Cuban, because even before we had seen this display, Mark Cuban had openly said, if any of my players want to kneel, I, I stand in support of them. And so now we're seeing everyone kneel in unison. Yeah. And I, I think what's important to note about all of this is like there to your point of there are certain people who decided not to. Um, meal, which I respect, you know, whatever decision or even Mark Cuban who said, listen, I support my players. My issue with, I think the reason why Kaepernick situation was much different was because him kneeling, people like attacked him for it. Whereas NBA has been like, look, whether you like, if you want to kneel, we're full support. And if you don't, that's your prerogative because you have your own beliefs, but don't knock those who are making light of it and using their platform in that way. But I thought, you know, Thursday night, this was a, a great um, just defining moment, a way to just do tip off that is like something we've never seen before. So I thought it was amazing. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I go back to what we spoke about a couple of weeks ago when we were just saying that, you know, we kind of all agreed that they'd be able to do more with the season being started up. Um, and I think that this was a great way to kick things off and let the world know how much the NBA supports um, just, you know, the whole the whole culture of everything mm -hmm. that's been uh, that's been going on. It was amazing seeing everybody pretty much uh, nailing down. Um, I, I love it, man. I love the, the, the slogans on the back of the jersey. I, I know, you know, guys who are, you know had their little gripes because they didn't get to pick what was on the back of the jerseys and you know maybe you might want to get a little deeper sentiment but you know what i'm saying i love seeing education reform on the jerseys i love seeing say her name on the back of the jersey i love seeing black lives matter on the on the back of the jerseys you know so i think that the nba still managed to do a great job as they often do um you know i just want them to to keep that momentum going because we, we definitely need it and we can't stop pushing and and i do want to note um two things one though I, I i definitely am in full support of the kneeling of the messages on the on the jerseys you know i just want i want the world to still think about proactive ways that we can make real real change i think the whole purpose of kneeling 
and of the jerseys um, is for awareness. And so I just think that we're at, we're past we're so past the point of awareness. So again, not knocking it, but I just think it's like now it's like action plan mode. Like we have the awareness, and it kind of goes back to the whole Jay Z conversation when he right when he had that meeting with the NFL. And he was like, all right, look, do you know the problem? Do you know the problem? Do you know the problem? Okay, great. We all know the problem. Now let's do something to change this, right? Like that's kind of where my head is at personally with it. It's just like the hashtags are cool and everything. The whole world knows Black Lives Matter, but Breonna Taylor's shooters, murderers are still out there, still employed. Yeah. Well, that um, comes so- also with, you know, we got to, you know, come come November, we got to get out there and vote because, because those type of changes – Mm-hmm. are not something where we can just come in and say, all right, everything is fixed right now. That comes with replacing the old mindset that's in all of these offices, the Senate, the Congress, the House of Representatives, the state controllers, the assemblymen and all of that. You know, so we have to we have to vote. Again, yeah. and I, I can't stress this enough, we have to vote responsibly yeah. as well. Understand who you're voting for. Understand what they stand for, what's, what's their morals. Understand if they actually have a plan that's going to help you, help your family, help your neighbors, you know, you have to really be responsible when you're out there and vote. But that's, you know, that's one of the main things we have to be aware of that we need to be out voting. Absolutely. That is the next step. And I think that I agree with you, Em. I've said from day one that to me, actions speak louder than words. Um, So the kneeling is a start. Yeah. Um, but it, again, from this, we need to have it progress into actual actions that take place and actual actions that show us that black lives matter. I, not that you just said it. Um, so, you know, that becomes the next step and, and we've got to continue to push that narrative, but having this message across your screen all day, every day is yeah. what at least starts to create that dialogue. Um, as you mentioned with Kaepernick, when he, when he knelt four years ago, five years ago, it was received negatively because people weren't willing to have the conversation. But now when you have all of these NBA players and major league baseball players and MLS players kneeling, now Mm -hmm. you're forced to have the conversation because now you can no longer hide behind ignorance or not understanding why somebody's kneeling. When there are thousands of people around the country who play a sport that you love that are kneeling, it forces you to at least say, okay, what is this about? And so that's why I do like what the NBA is doing, as we've always said, them supporting their players. Um, and I think even we're starting to see a little bit of that dialogue because Miles Leonard from the uh, Miami Heat yesterday, he didn't kneel. He, he wore um, his Black Lives Matter shirt. He did not, not kneel. And he said, he said, I didn't I don't kneel because my brother was part of the armed service, armed forces. And so the flag means something different to me. However, I also understand that everyone who is kneeling is not disrespecting the flag. It's a dialogue that we need to have. Um, and to, to his credit, because I didn't know this before he did it he actually went to everybody in the locker room and let them know I'm with you guys hundred percent on this. It's just, I cannot kneel for the anthem knowing that my brother served two terms in Afghanistan. And so that's, but, but hold on, hit me up. That's, that's what I mean about being part of the dialogue because years yeah. past, somebody would have just immediately took it negative and not wanted to have the conversation. This is yeah. a white, this is a white man from middle America who's saying, I want to have the conversation. I want you to educate me more so I can understand it better. That's, mm-hmm. that's something we didn't have four or five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and one thing I do. <laughs> so it's funny you say that because at first when you first said that, I'm like, man, I don't, I just, for so long, that was the conversation when Kaepernick was kneeling was like, Oh, but my grandfather said everything, but, and but, so, you know, I do respect what he's saying because he actually sounds like it's like, listen, I still want to have this conversation and this mat, this is important to me. I just don't want to protest in that way. And that I, that I can respect. I think in the past, the other things with Kaepernick was like, I don't respect y'all. Y'all are just reflecting it. I don't care. Like, it's like, I don't even care what you're kneeling about. Where he's, his, you know, his sentiments are a little different. Um, I do want to note, I know we're, we're speaking about NBA. However, I just want to give a huge shout out to the WNBA. I think um, a lot of NBA players took to Twitter this week, LeBron James and, and just uh, Dwayne Wade and um, former players about how the WNBA has always just, you know, put social issues first, have been extremely vocal. These ladies have been wearing, you know, slogans on their shirts and raising money, making awareness. Unfortunately, you know, they don't get as much, I think, media attention for when things do happen. So, you know, I have to give my ladies their flowers and just, you know, I think they've been consistent since day one. 
um, and it shows. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a fact. Shout out, shout out to the ladies because they did an amazing job um, as well on, on their opening weekend. We, we spoke about them. I, I posted them up. Um, I just thought they did such a great – everybody's been, you know, in the sports world as a whole has really yeah. been stepping up uh, within the past, you know, two weeks with just, just showing their support of everything that's been going on. Um, in regards to, to, to Myers uh, Leonard, um, I, it's, it's cool that you want to have that conversation, but I still, you know what I'm saying, like, I, I still feel like I don't want to hear the excuse in regards to kneeling about because, well, someone in my family served, and I look at it differently because of this, because at the end of the day, you're still, you're still saying that it's disrespectful to be kneeling to, to the flag. Because I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not pretty sure, I'm a thousand percent sure that his his brother ain't the only brother that fought in in some kind of war or in the armed services. You know, what, yeah. what about what about the what about the brothers that, that that fought in wars and came home to nothing? What about no, them? absolutely. Yeah, no, no. I, I'm sorry, Trevor. I didn't mean to cut you off. Get. Yeah, no, no. It's called. Like, yeah, I'm just saying. Like, I just don't. I just feel like that's a that's a cop out, and it's great that he wants to have that conversation, but. Again, his brother is not the only brother that served in, in our in our armed forces. So, you know what I'm saying? So I can't I don't understand the, if it's so is, is it a disrespect or is it not a disrespect? Like why why can't yeah. you take a knee? Because because then you must really feel like it's disrespect. Well his his explanation of it was the flag means something different to him because his brother served. But it's also so, not the flag, it's an anthem. The right, name. right. But the, the, reason, the reason I didn't view it as a cop-out is because he took the time to speak with his teammates and kind of gauge and let them know, obviously, how he felt. To me, I don't look at it as a cop-out because we, we're all going to feel something different when it comes to the flag or anything that symbolizes patriotism, right? You know, something, something that one person might feel symbolizes how great the country is. We might feel like, man, that's, that's something that it doesn't mean the same thing to me. So mm-hmm. that's why I didn't view it as a cop out. Him having the dialogue and him being willing to speak with his teammates and say, look, you know, I completely respect and I understand what, why you guys are doing it. It's just yeah. for me, I, I feel better doing it this way. And that's okay because that's way better than immediately trying to turn that negative and making it like, oh no, I'm not going to kneel. To me, what Jonathan Isaac of, of The Magic did was a little bit of a cop out because for him not to kneel, for him not to wear Black Lives Matter a t-shirt and then try to circle back and make it seem like, well, because I'm my, my, my faith, my Christianity, that to me is a cop out because it's like, so, so your, your faith doesn't allow you to see the injustices that are taking place in the country. Yeah. Like which one is it? You know? And, and I have yet to hear anybody from the Orlando magic come out and speak and say, yeah, we had that convo with him. Miles Leonard sat there with his Black Lives Matter t-shirt and his teammates actually wrapped their arms around his leg, even though he was standing next to them like in show of support, understanding like he's going to stand, but he's still part of the movement. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What was Jonathan Isaac's excuse? Yeah, I have no, and, I have no and, I, You know, it's funny because we're all, I feel like all three of us kind of have a different stance about this, which is great. But as far as him though, I think even though you're saying like, what's his excuse? And he's saying his faith, like that's no different than old boy saying my brother served, right? And the reason being is like, there. <laughs> people are protesting differently. And so he doesn't want to because of his brother and he doesn't want to because of his faith. It's like, you know, at, at the same time, who, who, who are we to tell them that that's the way they, that they don't feel comfortable protesting that way they don't. I guess my, the only reason why I, I'm, I still celebrate them is the solidarity that they show in regards to still advocating and speaking up for it and still agreeing with what's going on. Whereas Again, I hate to keep comparing it to NFL, but you know, I guess we kind of have to. People were like not kneeling, but then they were bashing him for it, and I think that's why I'm 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 okay with you saying this isn't the way you you would like to protest. Right. I mean, to me, the way the way I look at the 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 Myers Leonard situation is similar to um, Chris Long and a couple other guys on the Eagles, right? So to give to give everybody some perspective on it, um, when Malcolm Jenkins was still with the Eagles and he was kneeling. Even though Chris Long said himself, you know, hey, I understand. I'm not going to kneel. He would put his arm on his shoulder and show of support. And like, all right, I'm not going to kneel, but I, I understand where you're coming from. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the movement as well. It's just this is the way I plan on doing it. So that's the way I looked at it with, with Myers Leonard. Because 
he still took the time to at least let all of his teammates know how he was feeling and get their feelings on it as well because he didn't want to offend anybody by standing up. Yeah. And then he still, and, and obviously we understand this is just symbolism. We don't know what actions he's put behind this, but he still right. put on the Black Lives Matter t-shirt. To me, Jonathan Isaac standing during the anthem wasn't terrible. But then when you can't put the t-shirt on, it makes me question like, so why, why wouldn't you at least put the t-shirt on to show, A, I, I support it. I just would like to stand as mm -hmm. opposed to kneeling. Yeah. You know, because, because a, a few weeks ago, there was a, a big uproar because LeBron said he didn't want to put a message on his jersey. And there were some people who didn't want to understand that. So it's like, so LeBron can't put his own name on his jersey and you guys are mad about that. But then there are people who aren't mad because you're not willing to kneel or show solidarity. Right. And, and that's my bothering to me because someone like LeBron, who, yes, he wanted to wear his name in the back, but this man also created a charter school for black kids. Like, you know, like there's just, there's a lot of things that I'm like, you know, he's a person that's not doing it for the clout that he doesn't need the hashtag and for, Hey, I, I checked that mark. Oh, I support some black folks today because I, at the same time, I don't even want you to wear this shirt if you're not really trying to really be about it. I don't even want you to, to, to give us the high five because there was a lot of white folks during the time of um, the George Floyd that, you know, we spoke about it in previous shows. There was a lot of companies I had said in the past, like if you're, if you're a big company and you have more, you know, black lives matter hashtags than you do black employees, we don't want your hashtags. So you can't, you know, not hire black people still think you're extremely superior you know, do the, the the quick tap dance of I I'm in, I'm I show solidarity with you guys, and then go back into your very racist ways. So I rather I rather a a overt racist than a covert, and I don't even want the fakes. So I, in the same token, I'm kind of like I don't even care about the shirt and, and all these the stupid little symbolisms. Not stupid, but the symbolisms that aren't amounting to change. So you know, I just think that's really important. Yeah. What, what, um, well, Jonathan Isaac, I, I was a little bit disappointed just because, you know, like, at the end of the day, bro, like, brother, you still, you're still a black man. And in the same way your NBA counterpart, uh, Sterling Brown from yeah. the Milwaukee Bucks was, you know, harassed, you know, by, by police uh, about two years ago, season and a half ago, that could be you too, bro. They don't, they don't, you, you're not even, uh, he's not even a, a big enough face or figure in the NBA to where mm -hmm. the average person walking down the street is going to gonna know you. So he hasn't even reached that point yet. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You're just a tall black man to a lot of people in this country. So for him, I was I was disappointed that, you know what I'm saying, that he, he, he chose not to do either. Um, you know, I mean, I'm a Christian myself, so, so I didn't I didn't think it was any issues. I've never heard anybody, you know what I'm saying, in, 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 my, in my church or any other religious people, you know what I'm saying, say that, that it was an issue to do either one of those things. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, and one more thing and with Myers, uh, with, with Leonard, uh, I just wonder, so if you did kneel, what would happen? Like, what, does if somebody die if you if you, if you you chose to kneel? Does your brother lose his place in the, in the, in, in the army or whichever, um, um, you know, area of the armed forces he was in? Like, what, what happens if you did choose to kneel? Like, what really would be so bad about you kneeling with your brothers? Yeah. That's the only yeah. question I would have to ask. But I mean, even this, but even yeah, serving the country situation, it's like, I, it kills me when people use that as a as a reason because, like, black people served the country and, and then came home and, and like couldn't even eat inside. Like, served yeah. the country, came home and were treated less than a, you know mm -hmm. equal. And it's like, so we we have plenty, my my grandfather, you know, who wears his hat to this day tells me how he came back and couldn't go inside and use restrooms with, with you know, other people. And he, and his, he came off the bus bleem, bleem, uh, beaming of pride having served the country and got spit on for being black. Like, so I don't, I don't, that whole, I served the country and what this country means. I just, it racism is so embedded in American history that it's like when you're protesting racism, it's like you're anti like you're it's just you don't have patriotism like it's it's so it's that embedded in our in our culture that it's mind-boggling to me so what where, and where's where's the respect for your grandfather for my grandfather right. for all no. the black men and women that are so what so where's their respect that then if we just if this all if this is a you know you because you, you feel a certain way you think about the flag and the national anthem differently 
um, you know, them brothers and sisters served, you know, the same way. They fought in them right. same wars. They put their lives on the line, lost brothers out there as as well, and they were un they were treated unfairly at war serving their country as well. And then to come back here and be treated worse. Right. So when, when did they get respect? No, no. You, you're one thousand percent correct on that because we, we had that convo as well. I just think that when it comes to when it comes to yeah. the military, um, if you're raised in that environment, your mindset towards the flag is different. Mm -hmm. I had a small glimpse of it because my stepdad had joined the military when I was 13. So I spent, you know, my high school years in that lifestyle. But there are kids and they are friends, I should say, to this day that I have who grew up in that their whole life. So hearing the national anthem and standing for the flag means something different to them. So I don't want to I don't want to crucify him for that because you're right, Trip. It's, it's not you know, if you take a knee, it's not as if, you know, a, somebody dies or your brother now is no longer can serve the country. We know that's not the case. But if he grew up in that environment, then it does mean something different to him. You know what I'm saying? Similar to, as you said, somebody who grows up strong in their faith, there are certain things that, that are much stronger belief to them than it might be to somebody like me yeah. who didn't grow up in yeah. a church that way. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to criticize him for it. I, you know, would I have loved to see him take a knee with the rest of his team? Absolutely. Yeah. But it's also one of those things, again, of, of understanding that his mindset might be a little different. We also got to remember, again, we're talking a white man whose experiences in life are completely different than ours. Yeah. So he may see things through the news or through social media that he never had to experience. We have all experienced those things firsthand. Mm -hmm. So we know that black, white, brown, yellow, if you served in a country, it doesn't matter because you're not white. You know what I'm saying? If you're not white, it doesn't matter whether you served in a country or not. Um, with Jonathan Isaac, and I don't want to like try to just keep comparing those. So I'm using those two guys because they, they were the two players that stuck out the most over the yeah. weekend. Um, mm -hmm. Jonathan Isaac, I guess to me, being a, a basketball junkie, knowing that he's from the Bronx, knowing that he's from our area, is like, bro, I know you've seen things or you know people who have experienced things yeah. that, you know, even, even through your faith, you would have been like, man, this is an opportunity for me to make a statement and use mm -hmm. my platform the right way. And I just thought his explanation of it just fell really short of what it could have been. You know, I agree, we all need to see more action. Um, taking a knee and throwing on a t-shirt isn't the only way to protest, but yeah. we, we've seen other players like Jalen Brown, like Malcolm Brogdon, these guys who were on the front line during the protest, even before the NBA even said anything. Mm -hmm. So for a player who has been kind of quiet about this whole situation, I haven't, I don't remember seeing Jonathan Isaac a part of anything before this. Yeah. So then use your Christianity as a reason why you can't do it. And then try to double down and make it seem like, well, I, I, we need to take more action as opposed to kneeling. All right, so show us the action that you plan on taking then. Yeah, who's, yeah. who's we? Are you talking about everybody else and not Right, you? right. <laughs> because what you they, doing, bro? Right, because there are players who not only have taken action, but then were also more than willing to throw on the, ter the shirt and take a knee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well... <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 been crazy but all you know all in all I, i'm i'm proud of the nba as a whole for even backing all these players choosing to kneel to not kneel in major league baseball we're seeing a major major issue taking place now as a few days ago it only seemed like the miami marlins they had 18 total players that had tested positive for covid wow. it forced them to shut down their whole schedule for pretty much this whole week uh, i don't think they've played since monday and they've been off ever since then it interrupted the Philly schedule. Um, it interrupted the Yankees schedule. Yankees kind of had to redirect to go to Baltimore instead of going to Philly. Um, all of this, obviously, because Miami Marlins were in Philly when they started receiving these, this news of the diagnosis and a positive test. Now the St. Louis Cardinals are in the same boat. As of last night, I saw there were two people on the Cardinals staff that had tested positive. As of 30 minutes ago, ESPN had breaking news that there's a significant jump in positive tests on the St. Louis Cardinals. Wow. And there's already rumors floating around that Major League Baseball has already alerted all of the TV networks to plan for substitute programming for next week uh, if they need to shut down the, the, the league next week. So wow. we wow. barely made it a week through, and we're already seeing all of these issues. Yeah. And it sucks the most is that I mean, the Yankees are 6-1 right now. <laughs> so. And you know what? He hearing you say that, though, does kind of <laughs> make me feel bad for even laughing at Lou Williams because it really is that serious. Like, you know, if, if 
some an action like that could infect an entire franchise, entire team, and then and then we're seeing that in baseball. So it really is just important for these players to be safe. But I just think the Corona situation right now, like sports are not essential. And I know it was crazy not having it, but it's just getting to a point where how can you regulate this? Like players are going to catch it and their families and their kids and all these things. You know, you got Russell Wilson who just had a baby boy, you know, shout out to him in Sierra, um, who also expressed concerns about like, I have a wife that's pregnant a newborn and all that and going back. So yeah, I mean, to back to baseball, it's just um, that sucks. That really sucks, and I pray that they get they get well soon. Yeah, That's- what we're seeing what we're seeing in baseball is um, pretty much the continuation of what happened within our country. We were late to respond, and the numbers got out of control. And baseball suffer is suffering from it because baseball was late to put a plan in place, and now yeah. they're trying to continue their season and have guys fly across the country and state to state. And we're seeing what's yeah. what's happening. And the NFL is probably going to face the same issues. I mean, the, the NBA was able to figure it out and be able to put um, a large portion of their league in a bubble. But even with doing that, again, they had to limit it down to 22 teams and figure out who was going to come. And if you were injured, you can't go. You know, and if you had a positive test, you're going to have to quarantine for X amount of days before we allow you to be in a bubble. So yeah. even the NBA, even though it's running smoothly for them, they haven't had a positive test, I believe, since July 20th. Um, yeah. It's it's taken a lot to make it happen. So Major League Baseball is already behind the eight ball. NFL is going to be behind the eight ball as well. And as you mentioned, M, because these things are not essential, at some point you got to say enough is enough. If you're Major League Baseball and you've got two teams that are this badly infected by the virus, yeah. what, what are you waiting for? You're going to have to stop the season and just call it. Yeah, they should have been planning on doing the bubble from the from the jump. Um, they were going. I know they were going back and forth with the with the uh, players' association and whatnot to figure out if they were even going to have a season. But what they should have done at that point was discuss how the how the players felt about trying to run a season through through bubbles. Because it would take more than one, just because we're talking about the entire league at this point. But again, if they're breaking the games down to regional games anyway, all you had to do was have a bubble in each region. And then you just have to play it out like that. And then it would just be, once, I guess, once the playoffs come, then it just be, then you could, you know, get rid of the, the rest of the bubbles and you narrow it down to one bubble for all of the playoff teams. And you kind of go from there. Um, it's, it's not too late to do it now, mm-hmm. but you'd have to, you'd have, there would have to be a pause in the season in order yeah. for them to do that now. Because now you're talking about actually getting this thing together. Um, they do have the blueprint, fortunately because of the NBA and what they've been able to do. And, and as you mentioned, they haven't been a, a positive test since July 20th. I just wish they would have done this sooner rather than later. To yeah. point where it's just like, all right, now it's just like we're screwed because all of these players have tested positive at one time. And it's not only, well, they got to miss games. Somebody else got to miss games too because who was they playing during the schedule? Mm-hmm. So they're not the only team that's missing games because of the positive test. Right. Right. And that's what we're seeing. As you mentioned, the Yankees had to rework their schedule. Um, the Phillies now, even though they haven't had a test come back, they've been hurt the, wo- the most because they had to cancel their series with the Yankees. And now their series with the Blue Jays has been canceled as well. Um, so they've almost gone a week without playing any games. Um, I just think the, the issue with them doing a bubble, not that they could not have, I, I believe they, they could have, they could have done maybe four bubbles regionally, like you said, and, and kind of set it up with X amount of teams within a bubble and figure it out from there as far as the schedule. But Major League Baseball and their Players Association uh, have such a disconnect that we saw it during the beginning of the pandemic where they were arguing about how much the players were going to get paid. And the players yeah. were like, no, we want all our money. And the owners are like, there's no way we could pay you. Like, they were arguing about money when they should have been figuring out how can we actually play. Whereas exactly. the NBA and their Players Association immediately went to work like all right how can we make this work um it's it's well documented documented already at this point how the bigger players like the top 12 players in the league kind of got on a call with adam silver and they actually worked out the details of how we could do this if we're in a bubble and we play this amount of games who could be there who could not be there when could families join us like they really went to work on figuring out a a game plan whereas major league baseball was just worried about who's getting paid and how they're going to get paid so that's like yeah, that's yeah. how we always celebrate NBA because I just feel like they let they hear they are the example of having a job that, that 
when they do a question, you know, questionnaire, they actually listen to your answers. When they get, do a survey, they actually implement the changes that you want to see. And they just allow their players to have a voice. And I think that's how it should be. I would love to see more black owners, but still NBA is on their way to uh, just continue to, you know, hear their players and make a change. Plus they Absolutely. Got the and black owners anyway. Is that right? <laughs> So they got the most black owners anyway out of, out of the, the major sports. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the NFL, NFL is going to run into the same problem. NFL is going to have the same problem that Major League Baseball is having. Um, just last week, I mean, they were arguing about how many times the players are going to get tested. And so, you know, not to say that, that that isn't important. It is. But you guys are working on minor things that, that should be easy to get over already as opposed mm-hmm. to – are we getting tested every day, every other day, every third day? What if I want to opt out? Like, those are things you need to figure out quickly and then move on. Like, all right, how can we actually play these games and not put anybody in harm's way? The NFL is still planning on having everybody travel state to state, playing in different cities every Sunday. So, yeah, which is crazy. They, sh- they should actually be working on some type of a bubble, you know what I'm saying, since they got the time. Right now, this is where the, where the bubble is like, yo, listen, we got time to do it. Let's just figure this thing out because – you're looking at a plan that's set to fail if you don't have a bubble just from yeah. what's going on with, with Major League Baseball. So if you sit back and you got all this extra time and you don't figure something out, it's going to be even worse because you might not even get to start the season just because guys will still be testing positive. Uh, Matthew Stafford just tested positive. So he's on the, the COVID uh, IL list right now. You know what I mean? That's, that's your starting quarterback right there. So yeah. if other guys start catching this thing, we might not even have a football season. So I'd be – if I'm the commissioner and the owners, I'm looking into building up some kind of bubble system yeah. for the NFL right now and seeing how we can actually maintain negative tests throughout the season. And just the nature of the sport, I just imagine that being extremely difficult. You know, NBA, NBA you're able to do that just based off the basketball court, the, in, the indoor bubble. But NFL, there's so many players. That con- I mean – it's a contact sport like NBA, don't get me wrong, but I don't know, I just, for some reason, I just think the amount of people in the it's locker, hard. I don't know, I'm just, I'm fearful of the NFL and how they're going to be able to, to manage this, but we'll see. Yeah, it's a lot, it's but that, they're, they're going to do it, they got to start working on it now. And it, it's a lot, and the crazy thing is NFL, some of their um, stadiums are actually planning on having fans there. Wow. Yes, and that's no problem, <laughs> yes. but... It's, it's NFL. It's, it doesn't surprise me. I guess it's business as usual. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for joining in for another episode of Real Fans Real Talk. The sports world is crazy, but most importantly, stay safe. Corona is still very real and out here, so wear your mask, and we will see you guys next week. Peace. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans Real Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought